Hello, Exia here, doing a deck profile of my Necrocharge Abyss deck that got second place at the championship showdown at Gaming Giant. The uh, reason why I chose to play this deck is because it fits my playstyle really well, and I suck at winning dice rolls, so I don't have to worry about winning dice roll to go second with this deck more often than not. So, yeah. Uh, Alright, let's get into the deck profile. Uh, two soul conversion, uh, draw power for the deck. Uh, two is fine, I don't really miss the third one. I see it enough, so yeah, that's yeah, two is fine. Three Emperor's Command um, fuels your Necro Charge count and also lets you recycle departed followers from the cemetery back to hand, uh, which is very which is relevant later on in the game because it lets you um you know res lets you recycle each tar. Uh, we'll get to each tar one later on. Um, since we are playing each tar, we're playing a bunch of two drop targets for it. Two Demonium Punk Devil. This is probably this is probably my favorite two drop in this deck because it has ward, um, heals for two when it goes to the cemetery, and if needed, I can also give it bane to swing into an enemy follower that I need to deal with. Uh, Lesser Mummy um, is good for, good for early game if needed, but it's also uh, it's also. For closing out the game with each tar um, when you hit at least Necro Charge 10 because it becomes a 3-3. And then if you have the points to Evo one of them to swing for an additional 2 damage, which does come up uh, pretty good. And then Spartoy Sergeant, self-explanatory, uh, self um, mill top 2 cards, fuel Necro Charge. And then Mischievous Zombie does a lot of what does a lot of things I need in this deck, which is fuel my Necro Charge count. Uh, draw me a card if I depart uh, if I discard a departed card and on Evo gives that ghost bane to out followers. So this de yeah, this card is really good. Def uh, probably probably MVP uh, yeah, probably MVP on this deck because it also lets me se uh, let me set up my um, death's breath target that's kind of just rotting in my hand like Israfil and. Um, Alucard, if some in some weird situations, but mainly Israfil. So, yeah, probably MVP of the deck. Next, we have three Bone Chimeras. More uh, Necro Charge Fuel also has Rush and Bane on Necro Charge Seven. Fine Motion, um, like Mischievous Zombie, does a lot of stuff I need in this deck. Um, this also this also heals me for two, which is really nice because it helps keep me out just barely outside of lethal range, and then plus one plus one, um, you know, and then the mill two to fuel my necro charge count, and it's also it's also it's also dodges uh, surefire bullet, which is really nice. And then we have three Marozenski, uh, probably the best three drop in the deck. Uh, you might you know, on Necro Charge 10, minus 4, minus 4 a body, and then on Evo, minus 2, minus 2 another body, and then swing swing into an engaged follower if needed. So, potential 2, two for 1 or 3 for 1. Next, um, 2 Cowies. Um, so this was a last minute addition that I decided to put in because I was afraid of the dragon matchup. And... This also coincidentally uh, came up in the forest matchup because they made me go first. So on six, I dropped this ward, and now they can't just go elephant on six. They have to play around it first, which is, which is exactly what I put Cowie in for. So it's it's not it's not super impactful sometimes, but it does forces your opponent to have to play around it which is what I which is exactly what I need Kawi to do and nothing else so it can definitely make an argument to cut for something else but for for my play style I think it's fine next three death's breath best spell in the deck lets you bring out your big you brings out your top end on turn six, if you if they have if they've been milled to you know, if it's uh, sent to the cemetery, either by milling it with your mill cards or if you play mischievous zombie, um, 
pitch them to your pitch them from your hand to the cemetery if if they if they if they're just if they've just been rotting in your hand. Next, three each tar. Um, the first win condition of the deck um, lets you bring out two abyss uh, followers, two 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 cost abyss followers on Necro Charge ten. And then they also get plus one plus one, and they also have all other abyss followers on the field have rush while he's out. So let's say uh, when you bring when you bring this out, um, I the the card says Necro Charge ten, but ideally you really want to be in around like Necro Charge eleven, Necro Charge twelve, depending on the situ depending on the situation. Actually, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna say twelve. I'm gonna say twelve because when you uh, when you bring when you bring this out. Uh, you bring uh you're bringing out two cards from your cemetery which does take away from your necro charge count so if you bring out um two lesser mummies uh after you resolve each tar effect uh if you're not if you're still not in necro charge 10 by the time you bring these two out uh you do not get this you do not get their fanfare effects to give them storm so that's why that's why i say 12 because 12 because you know because Minus 12, minus 2 is 10, because you're bringing up 2 from each tire effect. So, yeah. Um, two, Az uh, 2 Azazel. Um, this is um, not really your win, no, not your win condition, but it helps you get to your win condition. Because on Evo, you cut your opponent's life down to 10, no questions asked. And also has the added benefit of making your opponent discard a random card, which is nice. So it could so it could come up depending on what they end up discarding. Uh, also, forgot to mention, um, on each tar, it does have a Necro Charge 20 effect. Um, it's o only really relevant if you're playing into slower matchups like... Ramp, uh, Ramp Dragon or Amulet Haven. Um, otherwise, you're probably not going to hit Necro Charge 20 reliably enough. Um, next, we have two Alucards. This was the other last minute addition I decided to put in because I wanted another angle to hit my opponent with instead of just relying on each tar, um, either from my hand or Death's Breath each tar. Uh, so yeah, that it, because on it has storm and then on Necro Charge ten has uh, gets plus two attack. So if if the opponent's not expecting this, which a lot of them probably won't, they're just they're gonna they're gonna take six to the face. And if they have a follower on board, I can do four damage to it and heal four. So the uh, the healing the healing was relevant in the tournament because it uh, against against the Abyss Mirror match. Um, it did let me get just barely outside of lethal range on uh, the turn before they played Masquerade Ghost and um, Phantom Howl. Um, the, the four healing, yeah, the the four healing put me at like two or three life, something you know, something like that. But basically, it got me just barely outside of, outside of lethal range to um, play, you know, play, you know, keep playing the game and draw it out to win the game. Next, we have two Israfil, insane card. Um, turn six, turn six, Death's Breath, Israfil, Evo, and clear. Uh, do strike, do five to your opponent's board is nuts. Next, we go to the Evo deck. Uh, two lesser mummy, one mischievous zombie. Well, one is all you need, really. Um, just if you only need it if you need to give your ghost bane to out a problematic follower on the board. Two Marzenski Evos, one Azazel, um, two Israfil Evo. The second one did come up in the Abyss Mirror match because that's how I won that match with only like few minutes, you know, few minutes left remaining. Um, because they had uh, they had Masquer um they yeah when they played Masquerade Ghost and then Phantom Howl and had a bunch of um, gargantuan ghosts out on the field. I happened to draw my second Israfil to be able to play it, and then Evo, and clear, uh, clear, clear their board for my other Israfil that was already out on the field to swing for game. And then we have two carrots for fine motion, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you to Michael for 
um, hosting the tournament. Um, he's he's the tournament organizer for Shadowverse and Gaming Giant. Um, again, thank you for allowing all this to happen. Um, and then thank uh, shout out to everybody that showed up um, you know, to play the game. And then uh, uh, Lord Inishi for helping me play test and optimize this deck list. And of course, my wife for letting me borrow her Asuka leader. Uh, just you know, just just to show it off because I I do like this card as well. This is pretty nice. But yeah, um, that's it for the deck profile. Uh, hope you guys like it. And as always, please like, comment, and, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.